I think one of the biggest issues that new agents have or struggle with is um, maintaining a consistent schedule. We talk about that. Yeah, this is one of my pretty big passion points because having a loose schedule or just saying, I'm going to wake up when I wake up and whatever happens happens today. I think it's a horrible way to start anything new, especially when you're like, there's always going to be risk when you're getting involved in business period. So to go into something that you don't have a skill set and you don't know what you're doing and to just wing it. Oh man, I think that's a horrible idea. So schedule to me was always really a non-negotiable. And I think if you get better at your own schedule to be easier to teach it. So my, my own schedule that I would try to relay to someone who's brand new is like, dude, you need to give it a 90-day time, if you're full-time. Like, let's look at a 90-day timeline. What does that look like? Are you going to do Monday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday? You know, you want to get to know the person. What are you willing to give up? What's your family situation? But it's all tailored around that specific individual. If you give me, like, Ty, when you come to me and you're like, hey, you know, I just I want to see what I can do over the next 12 months. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I've already talked to my spouse about this. You know, she understands the situation with our daughter. So I've already got a plan worked out at home. I'm like, okay, let's sit down and make a schedule. Are you willing to do six or seven days a week for the next 365 days to see what you can get done? Cool. Here's what it should look like. How often are you going to travel? Are you going to run a hybrid? Are you going to run an in-home? But this is the time that I would be in the office. This is how many leads that I would get. This is when I would dial for this area. I would run appointments every hour and 15 minutes. I would have some kind of 30, 60, 90 day written scheduled plan for you so that you're not just like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get after it every day with no direction. I think that is the biggest mistake. I love the people that want to work, be the hardest worker in the room type mentality. I have no issues with that, but it has to be aimed with purpose. If you have no intentionality behind your schedule and you're just like, that was, that was literally what almost put me out of business is I was just working, but I was just working. Like I wasn't accomplishing anything or getting anything done or producing it any sort of level that was going to keep me in a home. You know, so I needed to figure that part out. So when, when I've got these, like, uh, Hayden's one of my favorite dudes that we get to work with because he just wants to go. Right. But you're like, you have the same, like, Hayden is literally the exact same as me when I was getting, getting rolling. Mm-hmm. He's just so excited about the potential in the business that he's just going 120 miles an hour. Right. You know, and we're talking about, hey, slowing down for somebody with Hayden's, you know, type of personality in mind is so much more beneficial for him. And we could slow him down when we did our lock-in, watching him slow down be focused, be intentional about his speech patterns. Dude, he picked up a, he was the first one to pick up a sale that morning. Right. You know, so that, you know, that is a big picture circle of intentionality behind an actual schedule and regimen, but you've got to have something in place. Yeah. And I think one thing you mentioned that's important is outlining like, all right, what do you want this year to look like? And it's January, early January. So a lot of us just went through this where it's like, all right, what's your personal goal? What's your team goal? I think it's super helpful to have the yearly goal and then break that down into your monthly, you know, metrics. Like, all right, how many appointments do I got to run every month? What's my, you know, uh, sales goal or AP goal? And then breaking that down to the week and then to the day. And I've noticed, because I didn't do that last year. And I think it's because I didn't have, like, I didn't know what to expect, right? Whereas this year, I know very clearly what to expect. I also know my numbers. So I think when you're first starting out, those first 90 days, Really, it's like run a run a full schedule, but it's also to like track data, like learn your numbers. And so I know like to a science, basically, you know, if I run X amount of appointments, this is how much I'm going to sell because it's predictable. And so now it's like, all right, I have my, you can call it like a weekly rhythm. It's like, all right, I know that I have to hit at least um, 24 appointments every week. So that's 12 appointments every two run days at least in order to hit my goals. So I think... If you could talk about just real quick, like, you know, with that concept in mind, what do you recommend if someone's brand new? What's like a daily, like a daily schedule? Like what time should they get up? Maybe not as extreme as (laughs) some, but what's a good time to like get up? What do you do in the morning? How many appointments are you running or, or what is the dial day look like? Like give some like structure that someone can implement like today. Yeah, I, no, I noticed that you were kind of giving me a hard time about the getting up early stuff. So I, I really do appreciate the mornings. I think it's the most peaceful time, and it's a good way to get ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm a big 358 guy because, you know, in my mind, everyone wants to be on the 4 a.m. train. If I get two minutes on every single person that's sleeping until 4, you know, that just gives you a little subtle edge. <laughs> so maybe maybe that's not the 4 o'clock. But if you're used to getting up at 9, dude, let's try maybe 7 first. Oh, yeah. And then sure. we got to go from, like, 7 to 6 to, you know, 5 to, and then, you know, whatever you want to do with it. But the, I, I think if you can get up, a little bit earlier in the morning, 
if you've got an office within an hour to hour and a half on a dial, they like, you should really go. Um, I think getting plugged into that environment is huge. So get up early enough to get to the office no later than like 7, 730, so that everything can be set and structured to start dialing by 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You already need to have your leads prepped and ready from the night before. So that is, again, something you'll do a lead plan with your manager based around your uh, area, your income, all that stuff. So it'll be very tailored around you. But that should be done the night before. Everything is going to be purchased and organized so that you can start dialing at that 8 a.m. mark at the latest and you're ready to roll. And real quick, what time are you going to bed the night before? Is that? Ooh, I do not like to stay up late. <clears throat> like, I probably will go between 9.30 and 10.30. Like, I'm not a big stay up super late person. And that's because you're getting up at 3.58. So you're yes. shooting for your six hours. So I think 3.58 is the goal. But, like, let's say for me it's, like, 5.30, 5.45. So I'm trying to get in bed by... 11:30. So you think good Dude, six it's, a, hours. it's the same amount of hours right. and this is something that was pointed out to me through actual podcast. Hermosi was talking about this on mm -hmm. one of his um, you know, free trainings or whatever that he was given out. Mm -hmm. And he was like the people that like are so committed to the mornings, they don't take into the account like if I'm going to bed at 9, if I'm staying up till 2 in the morning, I'm still getting the same amount of right. action and work done. So for me, I like to be up in the morning, so I'm not a night owl person, so I just get up early and I get all the stuff done that I need to before I go on my work day, and then, you know, 9.30, 10.30, 11, worst case scenario, like I don't like to be up that late if I can help it, Right. Um, but I'm still getting the same amount of time as someone that gets up at 6, but goes to bed at, you know, 12 or 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. so you're getting the same amount of work done, so that was a good, a good point that you brought up. You don't have to be, you know, I get up at 2.30 in the morning, I bike for some four hours, and then I run to work, and... I, I do think, though, before the sun comes up, for sure. Like, yeah. Me, personally, I, I tried the 4 a.m. schedule, and I just wasn't disciplined enough because I would run those late late appointments. Like, I, I like to have an 8 o'clock appointment, and so I wasn't getting home till like, 10, and then it's like I want to hang out with the wife for a little bit. So if I was asleep by 12, waking up at 4, it just caught up to me. So it's like, all right, let me be a little more realistic. Let me go to bed at 11, but wake up at 5, 5.30, and then still get, get everything I need to done in the morning. So... Sorry to tangent. So now we're we're caught up. So eight a.m. we're dialing, um, and then you know what else? What yeah. Else so we doing? always ran the the schedule. You know, eight to noon, lunch from noon to one, one till you're done. Like mm -hmm. that's how we always ran. Um, especially when you know it was Zach and I in the little prison office that we had in Parker. Mm -hmm. Like that was it. It was like me and him and like two or three other people. We're like, hey, let's just. It used to be you know seven thirty to noon, one till you're done was kind of like the schedule because we wanted to try to maximize every second of dial time. And Wetmore's done the best training on this in the history of yep. dialing. Yep. If you break down, did it take you all day to dial or are you dialing all day or, you know, whatever the phrasing on that is, mm -hmm. that's where people get really lost. They're like, I was, I was literally dialing all day. I dialed, okay, let me count them, 163 dials in 12 hours. Like, dude, what could you possibly have been doing for 12 hours if you were literally hitting send? That number would be like five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred, whatever it is. Right. But that focus has to be there. You're not just hitting a button to hit it. You're not dialing without intentionality. Everything that you should do should be brought with some kind of purpose. So keep that in mind when you're doing your schedule and like, hey, my day-to-day -day stuff. If you're just present, but you're not accomplishing anything, you're really not working. Um, and I am just as guilty of that as anybody. It's not like I haven't showed up to the office and then all of a sudden it's 1030 and I'm like, well, I really haven't accomplished much today. So it's time to reset my brain and get back on track so I can get some stuff done. Mm -hmm. But that's how your dial day should look like if you're doing a traditional in-field, I'm going to dial one day, run the next two days out in the field. If you're doing virtual, I don't think it's going to be that much different. Mm -hmm. Your phone discipline has to be way higher, and you have to be mentally locked in because at any point in time that somebody answers, you've got to be ready and prepared. Their information in front of you, suitability sheet right there, mm -hmm. and you have to be ready to like have a really high-quality presentation to whoever you're talking to on the phone doesn't have to be compli complicated, but you've got to be prepared. And I, I'm sure that you have seen that, and I don't know if there's some adjustments in that like day-to-day -day stuff that you would, you would make that you've seen be successful for you, but I, I see a lot of people get distracted that are quote-unquote working or dialing, but they're not really getting anything done. Right. So one thing that I've like played around with over the years is, is a concept called time blocking, and I know Ed Milet talks about this um, – a lot of successful entrepreneurs, that's how they schedule their day. So it's time blocking. Basically, you're just, you're picking one task, you're picking one thing, and you're blocking it off for that period of time. So it's not just like, I'm not just coming into the office, and I'm not putting like, you know, oh, it's dial day, which I used to do like, oh, I'm just going to the office, and it's dial day. So whatever that means, I found myself taking all day to dial. 
as opposed to like, all right, from eight to 11, I'm dialing these Colorado Springs leads. From 11 to, to two or whatever it is, I'm dialing these leads. And so it's very like specific, very tactical within like, all right, these are these, these three hours I'm allotting to do this one task. And that you can apply to in, anything in life. But I think if people apply that to dial days, I think one thing that's helped me a lot early on when I when I couldn't hit my you know 15, 16 appointments for the next two run days, um, you know, I would book like one in the morning, you know, at 11, maybe a couple afternoon ones and a couple <laughs> evening ones. And then it, you look back and you're like, all right, those gaps in between, like if you have an 11 and then you don't have another one until two, how is that time being used? What I've done now, and I still implement this, is like, let me just, you know, let me book the afternoon and evening slots first, and then let me leave the morning to where I can either, you know, help guys train, or if I didn't hit my appointment goal, I have that extra time in the morning where I'm basically running the same schedule every single day, where it's like 8 a.m. we're dialing, you know, till I need to. If it's a dial day, it's a long, longer day. Whereas if it's a run day, it's like maybe I'm dialing from 8 to 12 to get those extra appointments in, and then headed to my first one at 11 and, and I have appointments the rest of the day. But that's that's how I think, you know, people can get ahead is being very tactical and very like, oh man, I always forget this word. I Same thing the other day, but very like um, intentional. That's the word, intentional with how they're running their day, knowing exactly what they're doing in every time block. Well, to your point, I think people forget about the cheat code. <clears throat> like you can cheat your schedule. So in in our space 30 appointments a week is considered a full-time schedule i don't know what that converts to virtual exactly um, but traditionally if you're running 30 appointments you're full-time i mean that's you know 40 plus hours of work if you're doing 30. Mm -hmm. so if you ran 10 appointments extra like every other week or three times that month and then you'd run a regular one in your fourth dude you're getting an entire week of extra production in in the same month everyone's like i'm going to use the five week and i'm really going to skyrocket my skyrocket my production in these five week months that we have because we have a couple of them throughout the year um and they forget that you can literally cheat that like you don't have to follow the rules right and you can get you know 30 or 40 extra appointments a week in in the same month mm -hmm. like total so you have a five week month every single month of the year and the six weeks on the five week months yeah. dude over time do you have any idea like the income difference that that can make to someone who's got a skill set that they've developed here just by putting in extra repetitions more consistently mm -hmm. like you don't even have to get better you just have to do the same reps a little bit more than you were doing when you were horrible and you'll by default have a better result right. so having a cheat code built into your calendar that's what Zach taught me how to do and then Jake and I did together for a long time like that's kind of what we've been trying to portray is why don't you just be terrible more often you know <laughs> because by eventually you're gonna not suck forever you will right. get better over time right. but you don't have to follow this hey I'm a nine-to-five employee or like I'm gonna work nine-to-five that's what I've committed to like you can literally just cheat a few hours every week give yourself a little leg up and then you really will pick up some steam and momentum mm -hmm. and there's a lot of unbelievable things that you can accomplish in a much smaller window of time if you do that right and all it is is an extra few appointments every run day two two or three extra not much and then you add that extra week every month for a whole year that's 12 weeks that's that's three extra months that you have over someone who who doesn't implement you know it with the same production and think about the difference between someone who's going to do 15 to 20 appointments a week versus the person who's cheating the calendar mm -hmm. Dude, it's you're you're never gonna have a shot to get like I would never have had a chance to try to chase Zach as far as I could if I would have just said, Hey, I can technically do what I need to do on twenty. Mm -hmm. If he's out doing forty, how am I gonna ever survive? Yeah, like well, you know, I'd, it just you'll be so far behind what your big goals are. And when you're surrounded by people like Zach and John and Mike and Sean and you know, Andrew and all these guys I've gotta spend a lot of time with. Dude, they, this is not something that they're, like, playing with their calendar. Mm -hmm. You know, they're always pedal to the metal, full blast, 24-7 type of guys. So when you want to run in that circle, if you're doing half of what they're doing, dude, you'll get dropped quick. Right. It's like running a long run with Goggins or something. <laughs> like, I'll see you in a few hours. I'm going to – I did my, you know, mile and a half. I'm all good. Right. No, that's, that's good. I think, uh, I think that's money. That'll help a lot of people.